Good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry, I'm still stretching. I'm on my second cup of coffee. And I got a comment yesterday from Becky B. in Arkansas saying she would rather me yammer <laughs> than to listen to music. And I would rather listen to music than to yammer. Um, okay, so I already had a video for this one loaded. We'll see how this goes and which one I end up with. Uh, I think this one is due to post today or tomorrow. I don't remember. This one's day 12. This one was day 13, and the reason I did this one was because of... Let me read the light. There we go. I signed up to take a class with Mary Beth Shaw and... Seth Apter um, from Sketchbook School, Mixed Media Journaling. Peg uh, Robinson posted the link in a chat, and I went down hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I am not a daily art journaler, but I do art every day, and some of it ends up in a journal, but it's not something I do consistently because I have to say it's not something I'm really immensely interested in doing. Now, I do do the, I am doing the um, art journal habit because I figured I can do one month a year and it wouldn't kill me. Some days it feels like it's going to, <laughs> but others are easier. Um, so anyway, the reason I did that bird you're, I'm going to tell you about in a second was because of the sketchbook school. Still too much glare. There we go. Um, this was, uh, Mary Beth Shaw did her, how she puts together uh her journals, which I found was very interesting. It is not a technique that I am used to, but yet I use kind of the same concept in a glue book. Um, so this was the spread, and I had a bunch of stuff out on the table that I planned to use and ended up using almost none of what I thought I was going to do. While I was looking for tissue paper to cover something up I didn't like, I found a napkin with a bird on it. And I used the napkin with the little bird on it. And I just was so attracted to the little bird. I don't know why, but I really like the bird. And then I took some of the branches off of, you know, the napkin has four, the four birds on it. And so I took some branches off some of the other ones where I had already cut out the bird from an, for another project. And I took the leftover branches and put those on here. And this was a stamp I think I got from Peg, it says Leaf. And I really liked it. It was such a simple little statement. So this is my, my first day of class of um, mixed media journaling from Sketchbook School. I will not show you day two because it's a horror show for me. I'm not happy with it yet, so I still need to make adjustments on it and work on it. The colors are just too bold for me. Although, I, I'm not a, usually a blue person, but for some reason, this just really made me happy to make this. So, I thought that if that made me happy, then I should try to paint the little bird. So, this is day 13 of the art journal habit. So I took um, a bird off the napkin to show what I was trying to duplicate. And then I put my colors down here, what I used from the Prima, you know, from this thing that I've been using. This is in a Dina Wakely uh, scribble stick box. But I had shown in a previous video a while ago that I put all my paints in here and then made myself a cheat sheet with it, laminated it. So if it gets dirty, I just wipe it off with a wet wipe or a wet paper towel. Um, so these are the paints that I've mostly been using. I did, I, I like using them. I think they're good paints, but I'd like something with a little more pigment in them. Anyway, so I sketched the little bird with a pencil, the basic body of the little bird with a pencil, and thought I'd done really well until I looked at it again with my husband I said, what do you think? He said, well, and I was like, uh-oh, here it comes. He goes, it's good. It's your interpretation of the bird. I went, okay. You know, that's the left-handed way of saying, well, it's not quite like the other bird. So <laughs> I, I started looking at it when he left the room, and I was like, eh, 
I should never have asked. But then I realized that the difference between my bird and this bird is the belly is more rounded and a little smaller here. These are more straight. I mean, I can see all the differences. I still am happy with my bird, though. I, that's the first time I ever tried to paint anything that looked like something real. Sort of real. <laughs> so there's my art journal habit um, for day day 13. And today's day 14. So I'm going to show you where I've been getting my ideas from for some of it. Some of it, you know, just... Eh. All right, here we go. So there's my laptop. I'm sorry, you're going to see glare from the... doesn't matter where I do it. Ugh. All right, so I pinned a bunch of stuff called watercolors in my Pinterest. And I, I did watercolors that I really was drawn to. And I keep referring back to them going, well, what do I feel like today? And don't you know, there's a bird that kind of looks, whoops, that kind of looks like the other bird I did already from the napkin. So obviously I know what I like because that's a second time. Um, and I like a lot of these. But some of them I know I'm not going to ever paint. I just love them though. And then I ended up finding things like tutorials. And one of them that really, what's the word, resonate? The one that really stuck in my head was this one right here. It's called Five Beginner Watercolor Painting Mistakes. And the woman teaches uh, watercolor. She's a watercolor teacher. And she tells you some common mistakes. And I realized that I was making those mistakes in my stuff. So I went back and looked at my stuff. And sure enough, I did exactly what she said. I've never had a watercolor painting lesson. I'm just telling you I'm an amateur, strictly, you know, playing around with it. And I'm comfortable with that. But one of the things she said is that people do not need leave enough white space in their watercolor. This one is, um, is totally filled in, and this one has white space. And I am guilty of doing this. Another thing that she said is people use too many colors. And I looked back at my spread from yesterday from the sketchbook school mixed media journaling class and thought, oh, I'm so typical. <laughs> There's too many colors. And so that's why I think it does not appeal to me. They, uh, she suggests that you stick to three pigments. And that's it. That you let them dry completely in between. And that... If you don't want them to mix, you must make sure that they're completely dry. Um, it's, I really found this to be very interesting. And I learned a lot from just reading her little blog post here. Too much detail at the beginning. Yes, we're guilty of that. What she suggests is that you put down the basic colors for, and I think she's using a flower as the, um, where is it? There we go. Where the flower has all kinds of detail here and it kind of gets lost a little bit, but at the end is where you need to do the detail. And a lot of people put the detail in, they just paint the whole thing right then, but that you should do this in stages and save your detail work for the very end. And I am Da, 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 guilty and working only in the center of the picture it's got more visual uh I'm trying to move the light sorry it's um it's got more visual interest if you, not everything is smack dab in the middle of the paper which ta -da, i'm guilty of so see you know i all these i'm so typical and i hate that but and this one this cracked me up clean water <laughs> is she talking about this <laughs> or maybe it would be this one. Wait, let me get out of here. Maybe it would be this one. <laughs> okay, I don't need to say any more about that part at all. Anyway, I really... Oh, she showed her dirty water, and I thought, oh, see, there I am again. She just could have wrote it about me, and that would have been it. Anyway, so that's what I've been basing my watercolor stuff on, is I find things in Pinterest that I think I might be able to paint 
Now it looks red in here. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best the light. It's 8 o'clock and very overcast outside here. So uh, I have my little trusty thing of paint where I try to use as many colors as possible. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm typical. <laughs> and um, so that's how I end up doing this. I just find things. I found a picture in Pinterest that I liked where somebody put down wet paint and then took another paint and tipped it on there and it went, Pfft. I love that look. I just thought it was very cool. Just a technique and then this one is very popular where you lay down the paint and then you just take a pen and go around all the little bumps and stuff. I did add this after the video was over the word leaf with the leaf on um, tissue paper. This one, uh, <laughs> what'd she say about too many colors <laughs> and no white space? <laughs> fine example. <laughs> Again, too many colors. <laughs> this is from Lisa Congdon uh, class that I took on Creative Bug. So this is something that, and even she limit limits the amount of colors that she uses in hers. So I tried to stick to the same basic colors. I think she uses like five or less. But she does that with her doodles too. When she does a spread like this, she takes two or three doodles and just repeats them over and over in different colors with different shapes. But it's the same thing over and over. And I guess continuity is a big thing, even in doodling, that, you know, just doing wacky all over the place stuff is good, but a lot of people like that kind of controlled, wrangled in sort of thing. And I kind of like that. But then on the other hand, once in a while, I have to do something wackadoo. This one is a little more controlled because it's got the baby blue in the background, although there's not a lot of white space on this. And then I keep to the same uh, primary colors, green and kind of orange and a gold, a gold and yellow sort of color. I really like this one. This one has no white space. And yes, I did keep to the same color palette, but there's no white space. I did after, actually I painted the green first and then I did the flowers on top of it. And that's one of the mistakes that she said that you need white space, which there's none of on here. Well, wait, there's some right there. <laughs> this, I could care less who was telling me what to do. It was my birthday. And since I didn't get to eat cake, I thought maybe I would make a cupcake and say some happy things about my birthday and my life. The sun, um, this was not really intended to be a watercolor per se. It was more about doodling for me than it was the watercolor, so I don't care about the rules or the perceived rules or hints or tips. This was the same way. I used very limited palette, tried to stay, and it had nothing, I'd never read, read that woman's stuff. I'm not crazy about the flowers on the ends, but I like the green and I like the background. Uh, the flowers, I think, could have been a little more planned out, but that came from my brain, not from anything I saw on Pinterest. This again, I have this thing about circles. This was something that I saw um, on Pinterest. And I have stuff in my uh, watercolor section and I have stuff pinned in my sketchbook and doodles. Those are the three that I go for to look for inspiration. And this one, I saw someone else's stuff on Pinterest and I realize now that I use six and I should have used five, should have varied the heights. You know, I make all the typical mistakes. So at least it gives me comfort to know I'm normal. <laughs> or your typical beginner. All right, so I still have to do today's drawing. I need to find inspiration, so I'll be right back.
Okay, so I did the string or the cord in between them, put a little thingies on the side, little doodles. I did the caps in black because that's what my example was, but I don't like them. It just looks too dark for me, and so I was trying to find my silver pen, and I'm thinking about covering up the black with the silver because I really don't like the black. And I only have, I'm looking to see my silver uniball. I used it all up last year on Christmas, so I might have to order me a new one. I don't see any other pens that I have that are silver, so this is going to have to do me. Uh, this is a, uh, what is it, dual tip stylo point double, I don't know, EK success. All right, so I'm going to cover up the black. Oh, that covered nicely. I just don't like the black. I've never seen light bulbs with black on them. Usually they're silver or gold. I've never seen black ones, so I don't want I don't want black on my stuff. Not like not for this. Do I like black? Yes, I do. It makes great doodles, but not for this project. So I'm gonna cover them up. And then I will draw lines, go back over it with um something else and draw lines, you know, like the ridges in the tops. This is a fictitious thing. I mean, it's not real. I don't have to be so crazy about it, but you know me. I don't know when to stop. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, good enough. Is it? Yes, it is. It's good enough. All right, let me blow dry real quick. Okay, so I think I'm gonna take my, <coughs> excuse me, Signos. This is Signo Uniball DX, which means it's really skinny. I think this is the fine line, which I like. And I'm going to outline them with black and then just do the little marks. I really don't. This was an experiment, so I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to look at this but me. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. All right. Oops, sorry. The dog is telling me it's either time to EAT or it's time to take a walk on the wild side outside. All right, dog, you're going to have to wait a minute. She's old. Waiting a minute might cost me a wet spot on the floor. All right, so this is it for me. Uh, wait, let me go let her out. I'll come back and I'll show you my inspiration. Okay, so I know this looks a little, well, on my camera, it looks a little blue tinted. Uh, light's not gonna well light helps a little sorry um, so this was my inspiration there are three of them in a row there's this one and I can't make them any larger I did try there's this one which is the same as that one uh, and then there's this one who's a variation I think there you go look at that one aren't they cool see how you see the dark through this one I like that and they stuck to very few colors, which is what someone suggested. And there, and this one I can't, I don't think I can make that. Yeah, this one's not going to go, let's see. <laughs> this one's not going to go any larger. I did try. I even tried the little make it bigger button and it didn't work. So that's my inspiration for my watercolor for day 14 of Art Journal Habit. I thought this year I would do watercolors just because it's it's fun. And I need to learn something new besides gluing paper on paper or playing with metal embossing. So there you go. I might not, if I'm going to talk through them, I might not come back for a couple days. It's easier for me to film because usually it takes about a half an hour, 45 minutes to do these. 
and then I cut out the drying parts, put it to music and post it so it's quick and easy. If I talk, it takes more time to edit out stuff and it takes forever where I live in the country to upload videos. So that's why I did very short little videos um, because it takes hours and hours overnight for it to upload. All right, so there's day 14. So I will see you maybe tomorrow or maybe in a couple days. We'll see how it goes. Thanks, everybody. Bye.